Hi, welcome to Soul TV. My name is Ian Taggy, and this is Yoga for Cyclists. Today we're going to be working a little bit of some more strength and alignment based postures and flows that are geared more specifically towards the parts of your body and the specific mechanical movements that you need while you're cycling. So it's going to be a lot of knee and ankle alignments, working on your hips, a lot of core strength because you need a lot of strength to help yourself be supported while you're down on your handlebars, so you're not just like wrenching into your wrists. Really keep yourself supported and also be able to breathe deeply and smoothly. So before we get moving, let's start by connecting with some breath. We're going to work some ujjayi, which translates to victorious breath. It's a strengthening and also stabilizing and heating breath. So if you haven't done it before, you create a small constriction in the back of your throat. It's very similar to fogging up a mirror, but you're breathing in and out through your nose. So we'll start, however, by pretending that you're fogging up a mirror. So you can just take your hands, take a big inhale through your nose, and exhale through your mouth, acting like you're fogging up the mirror. So you can feel that constriction in your throat and kind of the sound that it makes. But we want to do that breathing in and out through your nose rather than through your mouth. So take an inhale through your nose and try to make that constriction, but this time close your mouth. Sometimes this is also called ocean breath because it kind of sounds like the crashing of the waves of the ocean. So that's ujjayi and we will try to use that throughout our practice. Like I said, it's heating, it's stabilizing. And I like to use that personally while I'm cycling because it helps control my breath and it helps me warm up like that because it builds a lot of heat in the body and just kind of connects everything immediately. So let's start in a comfortable seat. It can be cross-legged or sitting on your knees. Let your hands rest on your knees or in your lap with one palm on top of the other. And close your eyes and just begin watching the breath. Inhale and exhale. Let the air move through your nose. And connect with that ujjayi, and slight constriction in the back of your throat. Just so you can hear that gentle sound. Begin slowing your breath down, deepening. With the exhale, become a little longer, emptying out more completely. And then as you inhale, fill from the bottoms of your lungs all the way to the top, slowly. And then a short pause at the top as your collarbone expand. And then exhale, press all the way down, hollowing out your belly. Continue lengthening and deepening your breath. Finding a rhythm, a steady flow. When you find a rhythm that works for you, try to match your inhale and exhale and take a few more cycles of breath just to really lock in that rhythm. This is going to be the foundation of the practice. Even when you're on your bike or doing anything else, a steady breath can translate to a steady mind and a steady body. Rhythmic pedaling on your bicycle or running or whatever it might be. You can keep the breath steady, everything else follows. And gently open your eyes. We'll transition to sitting on the knees, but try to keep that connection with your breath. So your knees together, just let your hands rest on your thighs. Take another two cycles of breath just to make sure you didn't lose it. The next inhale, come to stand on your knees, reach your arms overhead in a celebration. Tip your gaze up and reach through your fingers. You can even lift your heart and take a really gentle, gentle back bend. And as you exhale, release your seat to your heels, and we'll take a twist over to your left. 
right hand on the left knee. As you inhale, lengthen your spine, create space between the vertebrae, so on the exhale, you can soften deeper into the twist. Inhale, come back up into celebration, standing on the knees, arms overhead, and with the exhale, take your seat, twisting to the other side. Inhale, lengthen the spine. As you exhale, let the gaze soften over your back shoulder. Take this a couple more times, moving through the breath. Inhale, the celebration. As you exhale, lower the seat and take a twist. And inhale to lengthen. Exhale, gaze softens over the back shoulder. Inhale, up through the center in celebration. Exhale and twist. Inhale to lengthen. Exhale, let the gaze soften over your back shoulder. Take this one more time to each side. Inhale through the center. Exhale, lower and twist. Inhale through the center. Exhale, lower and twist. And try to keep your breath slow and steady, moving with the inhale and exhale. Inhale, come up to the center. Take your hands into heart or at your hips. We'll step the right leg out to the side. Keep your hips stacked on top of this knee that still bases. With the inhale, take your arms up overhead. You're going to lengthen, really elongate your sides. And as you exhale, right hand's going to come down onto that right leg. Reach your left arm up, lengthening your left side. Try to keep your heart spinning up towards the sky. With the next inhale, reach up and over. Exhale, left hand down to the floor. Right fingers reach out over your ear. Really press down through the outside edge of your right foot so you can really open your right side. And then inhale, come back up to the center. Hands to the heart as you bring your right knee in to meet your left. Pause for a moment. And we'll go right into the other side. So left foot steps out to the side. Again, hip is still on top of the knee. Inhale, reach the arms up overhead. Really reach through the fingertips, but allow the shoulders to soften away from your ears. And then exhale, take a tip towards that extended leg. Right fingers reach up, opening that body. As your right knee presses down, pulling your hips and your ribs apart. Inhale, lengthen, pull up. Exhale, right hand to the floor. His left finger can reach over your ear. Again, press through the outside edge of that left foot drawing your left hip away from your left ribs. Inhale, come back up through the center. Hands can come to the heart or your hips. You take your knees back together. And you're going to tuck your toes and come down to sit on your heels. You can use your hands on the floor or take them into your heart. And exhale, pluck the knees off of the floor, coming into this high-heeled squat. I'm just going to balance here. So you're on your toes, your heels are lifted. Try to keep your heels more or less together than splaying apart. Keep your heart lifted, steady with the breath. Choose one point to focus on, it can be on the floor, the wall, something ahead of you. Try to keep your back really long as you inhale, come all the way to stand. Heels are still lifted. Stay here for another breath, lift the heels as much as you can and then exhale, slowly lower yourself down, keeping your heart lifted, pressing your knees forward. We'll take that one more time, just like that. Heels lifted, inhale, press all the way to stand. And then exhale, lower yourself down. Gently lower the knees to the floor, Lock your hands out in front of you, and we'll come into all fours. Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. And just press your right foot back, press that heel, but toes are on the floor. Getting into the hamstrings for a moment. And then we'll just switch out the sides. Left toes on the floor, press that left heel back. And come right back into your all fours. We're going to move through a little bit of cat-cow, connecting your breath with your movement. So you inhale, lower the belly, gaze and tailbone tip up. 
Exhale, draw your navel to the spine, rounding your back, pressing into cat. Inhale, lower your belly. Draw your heart through your biceps, pulling yourself into cow. And move with your breath. Take a few more rounds. Inhaling into cow, taking a short pause. As the exhale moves, so does your body. Pressing into cats. So as you move your spine through space, stay grounding down through your palms, your knees, and the tops of your feet. Keeping your breath slow and steady. On your next exhale, press yourself into cat. And then draw back to a neutral spine. Again, check your alignment. Shoulders over wrists, hips over knees. You're going to stretch your left hand forward and your right leg back. I mean to balance. Keep your core really engaged. Keep you lifted with that neutral spine. As you exhale, tuck your elbow into your knee, rounding your back. Inhale, stretch. You can keep the core engaged for balance. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, stretch your back. One last time, tuck in really tight. Exhale, elbow to knee, rounding the spine. Hold. Inhale, stretch it out. And then exhale, hand and knee to the floor. Let your hips work back towards your heels, taking just a moment in child's pose. Reconnect with the breath, let the hips soften towards your heels. Inhale, come back up to all fours. This time we'll switch sides, so ground down through your left palm. As your right hand reaches forward, left hand foot stretches back. Take a moment, find your balance, get your core engaged so you've got that lift. So your spine is still neutral. And then exhale, elbow to knee, tucking in tight, rounding the spine like in cat. And then inhale, stretch it out. Exhale, tuck it in, hold tight. Inhale, slowly expand. One last time, tuck in really tight. Exhale, elbow to knee. Hold. And then inhale, stretch it out. Exhale, back to all fours. Lengthen your spine. Ground through your palms. Tuck your toes with an exhale, hips to the sky, pressing back into a downward facing dog. Take a couple of breaths, pedal out your legs. Just kind of find your down dog, getting your body a little bit ready to move some more. And bend your knees, gaze between your hands, and walk your hand, feet up to meet your hands, coming into a forward fold. Separate your feet about hip width apart, so that's like two fists, so put your fists together and just right between your feet. That should be about hip width apart. Now put a bend in your knees and inhale. Come all the way to stand, upward salute. Exhale, bring your hands to the heart. So check in with your alignment. Make sure that your toes are pointing pretty much forward. Outsides of your feet are pretty much parallel. Knees are stacked over feet. We're gonna do some squats to get the body moving and really work on the alignment of the knees, staying over the toes, tracking forward and backwards. A lot of times what happens, we get tight hips or glutes or weak adductors. And this can really affect your stroke when you're cycling. At the top of your stroke, your knee might fly out, or at the bottom it might buckle in. All sorts of things can happen that can lead to knee injuries, hip problems, low back, inefficient cycling, the whole thing. So I'm gonna try to just get a little flow, work on the strength and the alignment. So as you inhale, take your arms to the sky. Exhale, bend your knees coming into a squat. Just as low as you can without buckling forward or knees coming out, all of these things. So it might be to here, but really what's important is you're lifting the heart and knees are tracking straight out and back, just like this. So we'll move through this several times. So you exhale, hands forward, lower down. Inhale, circle arms up overhead. 
exhale, arms forward, bending the knees, and then inhale, circle up. Take this eight more times, exhale down. Move slow, inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale down. Inhale up, four more. Move with your breath. Last one. Inhale, come all the way up. Take the hands into the heart. I'll take another set of 12, this time with an arm variation. Spend too much time on your bicycle, especially a road bike down in the drops. Get really hunched. Your shoulders constantly wrapping forward. So it's important to open the chest, opening it out backwards, rolling the shoulders back. So take the right arm up, left arm out, left palm faces back, and then work the hands together so that they come to try to touch in between your shoulder blades. They might come together or not. If they don't, just press your hands into your back like this, or you can use a strap or a towel to get that traction. So whichever variation you're going to use with your hands, you can check your alignment and with this arm variation, you may not be able to go as, as low on your squat. So the inhale, exhale, bend the knees and squat. Inhale up. Take 11 more. Five more. You might want to pause and check in again. Make sure that you're keeping your alignments and not trying to go too far. Last one. Inhale, come up. Release the arms to the side. Exhale, hands to the heart and forward fold. Take the hands behind your calves, lengthen your spine and exhale, draw yourself in. You can bend your knees, inhale, come all the way to stand. Upward salute. One last time through these squats, switching the arms out. Left hand up, right hand out, right palm to the back. And you can see if you get that connection between the shoulder blades. And it might take a little contorting to get in there. If this happens, make sure you can draw yourself back together. Check out your feet, toes forward, just six times on this side. Take an inhale, exhale, bend the knees. Make sure the knees are tracking forward Heart is lifted, inhale up. Five more. Keep your breath slow and steady. Turn on that ujjayi if you lost it. Last couple here. One more, just for good measure. Press the knees forward and hold at your lowest point. And then inhale slowly. Up, free your arms. Stretch the arms to the side and then up overhead. Exhale, forward fold. Heel toe your feet together. And just soften in. Let your head hang out heavy. Maybe shake your head yes and no. Relaxing your neck. Bend your knees and with an inhale, come all the way to stand, upward salute. 
Exhale, take the hands into the heart. Inhale, circle your arms overhead. When you exhale, interlace the hands behind the low back and fold forward. Let your hands work out over your head towards the front. Take another breath. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step the right leg back Coming into a low lunge. The inhale, reach your arms forward. Come all the way up to a high lunge. Press your right hip forward and left hip back. Take the hands to heart. And with the exhale, slowly take your right knee down to the floor. But keep feeling this lift from your core, from underneath your seat. And let that left knee gently find the floor. Your hands to your left knee. Roll your chest open, softening the hips towards the floor. Keep your gaze tipping up. And then exhale, take the hands to the floor, step it back, downward facing dog. Take a couple of breaths, then shift your weight forward, lower your knees, chest lands right between your hands, and your chin finds the mat, Ashtanga Namaskar. Inhale, slide through to a little cobra. Keep your elbows working back, squeezing to your ribs, and drawing towards your hips. Crown of your head reaches forward. Gaze is down and slightly forward. Exhale, hips to heels, child's pose. Let your hips soften down to your heels. Palms working into the mat. Inhale through all fours. Exhale, downward dog. Inhale, right leg to the sky. As you exhale, bend the knee. Walk or step the foot forward between the hands. Let the left knee find the floor. Hands to your right thigh, Anjane Asana. So again, the hips are softening down getting into your left hip flexors, but you're still lengthening your sides. Let your shoulders open back and down. Here, one more inhale here. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step your back foot to meet your front. Uttanasana, forward fold. Put a bend in your knees as you inhale, come all the way to stand. Upward salutes. Exhale, hands to your heart. The inhale, arms to the sky. You exhale, arms out to the side, a slow swan dive all the way down. Inhale, come up, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Put a little bend in your knees. You inhale, come up to Utkatasana. Draw your navel to your spine. Your knees are hugging together arms reach. Again, let your shoulders soften away from your ears. Your heart is lifted. Just take a few breaths here. Stay steady with the ujjayi. You might close your eyes. Your next exhale, hands through the center line, forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway, lift length in your spine. Exhale and fold it in. Step your left leg back, lower your knee. Inhale, this time arms to the sky as you come into Anjane Asana. If this right knee starts flying out to the side, draw it back in. Work your left hip forward and your right hip back. Gaze can tip up as your hips soften down. Shoulders melt away from your ears. One more inhale. Get broad across your collarbone. Exhale, hands to the floor. Tuck your back toes as you step it back, downward facing dog. Inhale, shift your weight forward, lowering knees, chest and chin. Ashtanga Namaskar. Notice my hips are still up, so there's a back bend going on here. With the inhale, slide through to a little cobra, Bhujangasana. Tops your feet, press into the floor. Soften your seat so your back body is doing the work. Inhale, one more. Exhale, hips to heels, child's pose. Keep 
Keep it a little active so your palms are pressing into the mat and your elbows are lifted. Reconnect with your steady, slow breath. It'll feel more constricted because your thighs are pressing into your abdomen. So instead, use your breath to expand your back body. Breathing into your back ribs, underneath your scapula, your shoulder blades, around your kidneys, and even your low back. Use your breath to stretch these spaces. And inhale, come up through all fours. Exhale, downward dog. Step your feet together, left leg to the sky on the inhale. Exhale, bend the knee. Walk or step your foot between your hands. Again, right knee to the floor, coming to Anjane Asana. Take your arms to the sky. Gaze can tip up, heart lifts. Stay broad across your collarbone. Again, chicken with that left knee if it's trying to fall out to the side. Draw it back in. As you draw the left hip back and right hip forward, you deepen the stretch, but you also work these inner thigh muscles, the adductors. One more big inhale, broad across your collarbone. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step your right foot up to meet your left. Forward fold, Uttanasana. Let your head hang, maybe hands to opposite elbows. Get your body a little loose. Take a little shift from side to side. A little bend in your knees as you inhale. Come all the way to stand. Upward salute. Exhale, hands to the heart. Take a moment and connect with your posture. Starting at the soles of your feet. Move up through your body. Just checking in with the way that you stand. If you're all on your toes or in your heels, Maybe your feet roll out. Just connect. Observe your posture. Observe how your body feels. See if you're holding extra tension in your knees or in your calves, in your quads, your hips. All of these places, we store a lot of things there. The more you can loosen this and let, the, let go of these things, your body will be able to, be, to move with ease, more fluidly. Now on the bike, your movements will be so much smoother, efficient. You'll become a flow. Less work and more flow. So check in again with your hips if they got tight again. Low back, see where you can soften. Let your shoulders soften back and down. Soften your face. And inhale, take your arms up to the sky. Open your eyes, exhale, hands through the center line, forward fold. With the inhale, the right leg's going to step back. Again, lower your right knee to the floor. And now take your arms to the sky. With the exhale, we're going to take a twist. So left hand's going to fly back, right hand forward. Try to let the hips keep working down. And again, check in the alignment with the knee and the ankle. Gaze might come out over your left fingertips. And then inhale, arms up overhead. Tuck your back toes. And fire up your quads and your core and get some lift all the way from your pelvic floor as you inhale, straighten that leg, come in you stand in a high lunge. And with the exhale, right heel to the floor as you open your hips to the side, warrior two. And find this stance, let it be strong, hips and shoulders opening to the side, arms parallel to the floor, gaze is soft over the front fingertips. Keep your legs just like this with a deep bend in the front knee. Inhale, tip it back, peaceful warrior, left fingers to the sky. You open the left side. Make sure the left knee stays bent. And again, working over that ankle, it might try to come in or even out. Try to keep it stacked. One more inhale. As you exhale, take both hands down to the floor, back to a low lunge. Step the left leg back and up to the sky, three-legged dog. Keep your left toes flexed or pointed. Keep your hips square, getting into the right hamstrings. 
and then left foot comes down to meet the right, downward facing dog. Now bend your knees deeply, come all the way down into all fours. So we're actually going to play with downward dog a little bit. So we'll start in all, all fours though. And we want to work on learning how to wrap the shoulders, keeping the shoulder girdle engaged, and using a bunch of these side muscles that are actually really, really important in cycling, especially when you get up out of the saddle and you're really just digging into it. The more you can get all of these muscles working together, the more power you're going to be able to transfer into the pedals. So start in all fours like this. Bend your elbows out to the side and then wrap them in around towards your hips. So you're still bent. So this is actually going to feel a lot like when you're in the drops if you're on a road bike. You're just like tucked down and tight. So you want to hold this, but then straighten your arms, but keep that engagement in your shoulders and in your sides. And now you can tuck your toes, but keep that engagement with the shoulders wrapped as you lift your hips. And it might be hard to keep that engagement and work your heart back towards your knees. And that's okay. That's to be expected for a while. Most people's shoulders are really, really tight. And so you might need to soften out to soften your heart back to your knees. But then see if you can find that engagement again. Press your elbows to the side, wrap, and then extend the arms. Feel that whole engagement all along your sides, along your shoulder blades, as your shoulder blades work together, but back down towards your hips. And now inhale, you're gonna come forward to a plank. Try to keep that shoulder engagement. Shoulder blades totally active. Exhale back to a downward facing dog. Check that out again, elbows out to the sides, wrap the shoulders. Get engaged as the shoulder blades slide towards the hips. Inhale, shift forward. Feel that engagement along your sides, all the way along your back. Good, exhale knees to the floor. Press it back to a child's pose. With the inhale, you're gonna slide forward all the way out onto your belly. Let your hands reach back right by your hips. With an inhale, press the tops of your feet into the floor, legs together. Roll your shoulders and chest off of the floor, reaching your fingers back. Crown your head forward. Take several breaths here, strengthening the whole back side of the body, developing that core. But really try to keep your glutes soft so they're not doing the work. It really is your back. Inhale up a little higher and hold for one. Exhale lower down, let one of you rest on the mat. You can soften your shoulders. And we'll take one more round of that. Take the hands back. Reach the fingers back. Inhale, lift. Legs together. Press the tops of feet into the floor. Inhale a little higher for one, hold for two, exhale lower down, let the other ear rest on the mat. Give your hips a soft shake from side to side, releasing the low back. Take the hands back underneath the shoulders, tuck the toes, press up to plank, exhale downward dog. Step your feet together. The inhale, left leg to the sky. Exhale, walk your step a foot between the hands. Low lunge. Inhale, come up to stand. Right heel on the floor, left knee bent. Warrior one. So my hips and shoulders are working square to the front of the mat. So the back foot can step a little further forward. Notice my toes are at an angle. Inhale, arms to the sky. Reach up, lengthening my sides. Exhale, interlace the hands behind the low back. With an inhale, open the chest. Exhale, come forward, humble warrior. Left shoulder towards my left knee. Let my head soften, just relax in. One more breath. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step it forward, Uttanasana, forward fold.
and it'll come up halfway lift, lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold in. Inhale, come back up, halfway lift. Lengthen out. Exhale and fold. Inhale, come all the way to stand. Upward salutes. Exhale, hands to the heart. With the inhale, reach to the sky. Exhale, arms to the side. A slow swan dive. Really keep your core engaged. Quads are firm. Forward fold. Inhale up, halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Step the left leg back. And lower the knee to the floor. Inhale, come up, Anjane Asana. The exhale, you're going to reach your right hand back, left hand forward, coming into this twist. Again, check the alignment of this front knee. As you open your chest to the side, take your gaze over your back fingers. Inhale, come back up through the center. And tuck your back toes. Get your feet strong on the floor. Feel the lift from your pelvic floor all the way up through your core. You straighten that back leg and come up to stand in a high lunge. With the exhale, open it out to warrior two. Strong in both feet. Left foot outside of that left foot presses into the floor. And my knee is stacked on my right ankle. Draw a little to the outside, hips and shoulders opening to the side of the mat. Gaze soft over the front fingertips. And try to keep your shoulders stacked on your hips too. Sometimes we get excited for what's in front or maybe stuck in what's behind. Let's try to stay stacked right in the center, right where you are. Over the next inhale, tip it back, peaceful warrior. Right fingers to the sky. Keep that deep bend in the right knee. One more inhale. Exhale, hands to the floor. Step it back, right leg up to the sky, three-legged dog. Again, keep the right foot active. Hips square to the floor. Right foot comes down to meet the left. The inhale, we're gonna shift forward into a plank. And exhale, bend your elbows, come halfway down, chaturanga. Notice the alignment. Elbows are over the wrists and stuck in towards my ribs. Shoulders slide back away from the ears. We're gonna inhale back up to a plank. Exhale, downward dog. As we take another chaturanga, really try to feel the engagement of the sides as your elbows draw in towards your ribs and back towards your hips. Inhale to a plank. Exhale, halfway down. Chaturanga, hold for a breath. Inhale up to a plank. Good, and with a slow exhale, lower all the way to your belly. Keep your elbows tucked into your sides. Let one of you rest on the mat. Arms by your hips. Reconnect with your breath. Slide the shoulders and the elbows right underneath the shoulders, coming to a sphinx. So elbows are shoulder width apart and right underneath the shoulder, maybe a little in front. Fingers stretch out forward. Put a little space between the feet and draw the heart forward through the biceps. Gaze is directly forward. Slide the shoulders down away from your ears and breathe. Take two more breaths. Keep your heart opening forward, shoulders working back and down.
and exhale. Release, let the other ear rest on the mat. Slide the hands back underneath the shoulders. Press it back through child's and into downward dog. Step your feet together, right leg to the sky. As you exhale, bend the knee, step the foot between the hands. Step your left foot a little forward, heel to the ground. Inhale it up, warrior one. Again, check that bend in the right knee. Hips and shoulders square towards the front. And you can narrow that stance a little bit to help move the hips forward. You lift the heart and the gaze, soften your shoulders away from your ears. One more inhale. Exhale, interlace the hands behind the low back. Inhale, open the heart. Exhale, take it forward, shoulder towards the knee. Really soften your neck, let your head hang heavy. Exhale, release the hands to the floor. Step your left foot up to meet the front, forward fold. Inhale, come up halfway lift. Exhale and fold. Now step your feet out about a little wider than hip width, maybe about to the side of the mat. You're gonna bend your knees, coming down to a little squat, hands on the floor between your feet. So you wanna get your hips and your knees about the same line, so your thigh bone is parallel to the floor. Hands can stay between the feet, or maybe walk behind the heels, so the web of the hand is right behind the heel. Or it might come all the way around, wrapping to the tops of your feet. But try to keep the seat at the same level as the knees, and <laughs> avoid or resist sitting on the arms. Try to keep some activity lifting from the pelvic floor Gazes forward so the collarbone is open. Shoulders still sliding down away from the ears. And hold this for a few breaths. Keep your feet pressing into the mat. Still breathe steady. If your arms are wrapped, unwrap. Straighten the legs and forward fold. Use your hands to the floor. Inhale, come all the way to stand. Exhale, hands into the heart. We'll step one leg back. Come to the side of the mat so you got parallel feet, wide stance. Arms out to the side general guideline for width of the legs is ankles approximately under the wrist, more or less. Inhale, take the arms to the sky. As you exhale, interlace the hands behind the low back. Then you fold forward, working hands over the head. Now keep your legs active, but you want a little micro bend in the knees. the outside edge of the feet pressing into the floor. We still press the base of the big toe also. One more inhale. Exhale, free the hands. Come into Prasarita Padottanasana. Inhale, come up halfway left. Maybe fingers on the floor right underneath your shoulders. Reach the crown of your head forward, tailbone back. Shoulder blades slide together and down your back. Then exhale, fold. Check in with your balance if you're all on your heels or your toes. Try to equalize the weights. Inhale, come back up, halfway lift. Now point your heels in and your toes out. So feet are about 45 degrees. Toes are pretty much pointing at the corners of the mat. You your head, your shoulders, and your hips all on the same level. 
you take your weight over into your left foot, working on skandhasthana. So the crown of your head is working out from your tailbone, perpendicular to your mat the entire time. So there's this desire to reach over towards the knee, but you want to stay long, working straight out. Walk your hands underneath your shoulders. As you inhale, stay low through the center, exhale to the other side. Gaze can come out over the extended leg. Inhale through the center, exhale to the other side. You might take hands out to ankles or behind the low back, but just make sure that you maintain this alignment. Now flow with the breath as you inhale through the center, exhale to the side. Moving thoughtfully from side to side. Keep your breath steady and long and connect with that ujjayi. Take a couple more to each side. We started on the left, so we want to finish on the right to make it even. Now inhale, come back to the center, straighten the legs, toes in, heels out, prasarita. So again, lengthen the spine. It's very important, especially as we begin twisting a little more. So much of the time we spend sitting on the bike, we get hunched down and really crunched up, so we need to counter that and learn to keep length. So bring the left fingers right underneath the gaze. Keep that spine long. As you inhale, peel the right arm up and open. Let the gaze tip up. The hips like to get uneven too. So try to keep your hips square to the floor. So think about your navel pointing down, but your chest spinning open and up. Breathe here for three. Next exhale, come back to the center. Pause for a moment as you re-lengthen the spine. Check equal balance between heels and toes, both feet. Now right hand under the gaze. Keep the navel pointing down as the left arm peels up to the sky. Let the heart open. Spinning the chest over towards the side, maybe up. Another inhale, exhale down through the center, back to prasarita. Now point the heels in and the toes out. You might narrow your stance a little bit more so that the knee stacks right on top of the ankles. Again, feet about 45 degrees, bend the knees. Inhale, come up, Ashvatasana, horse stance. Try to keep a neutral spine so the tailbone's gently tucked. Heart slightly lifted. I'm gonna settle in for a couple of breaths so you might close your eyes. As your legs start talking, just come right back to your breath. Focusing on the inhale and the exhale. Noticing all the processes that happen in your mind. All the things that come up. Maybe if you want to escape or get out of the posture. You want to ease out of it. Just notice what's happening and come back to your breath. A few more breaths. With the next inhale, straighten the legs, circle arms overhead. Step the feet back together, in front of your mat, exhale, forward fold. Inhale, come back up, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Now step the feet out, getting a little wider than your hips. Bend your knees, we're gonna come all the way down to a squat. Let the elbows work into the insides of the knees. Tailbone root down, heart lifts. You can use the elbows to work the knees a little more open, opening the hips. Try to keep your spine long. And let the lower back release down. A 
Stay in with your breath. More inhale. Exhale, lower your seat to the floor. We'll bend your knees and draw your heels in towards your seat. Take your hands right behind your knees. Get your heart lifted. Fire up your core. Come back to balance on your sit bones. Bring your shins parallel to the mat. Take a few breaths in Navasana, boat pose. Keep the toes active so it can be flexed feet, pointed toes, or this in between, which is the demi point. Keep the heart lifted. One more inhale, exhale, release. Slide the feet together, knees fall out to the side. Try to keep the heart lifted, spine long. So a lot of people are familiar with this being a butterfly stretch. Kind of like yank on it and pull yourself in. This is called Baddha Konasana, or bound angle pose in yoga. We want to take this soft, lengthening the spine, reaching the heart forward as you hinge from the hips. The elbows might come to the insides of the shins, just gently guiding the knees towards the floor. Gently. And soften yourself in, rather than just yanking yourself, wrenching it in. Use your breath to see what you can release, see where you can soften. As you let go, you'll be able to deepen. And inhale, come back up, lengthen out your spine, draw your knees together. And we'll take another visit to boats. Navasana, hands behind the knees, sit back and balance for a few breaths. You might take your arms to the side or up. Or if doing this causes you to slump back down, rounding your spine, take your hands back behind your knees and lift. A couple more breaths, stay steady, lifting the heart. You can take your gaze up. Exhale, release the feet to the floor. Take your hands right behind your hips. Fingers point towards your toes. The inhale, lift your hips, bring up into altar. You roll your shoulders open. Gaze can come down across the front line of your body or up. Another inhale. Exhale, lower the seat. Your hands again, just behind the hips. And this time with the inhale, the legs extended, lift the hips, soles of the feet work towards the floor, we into an upward facing plank. Try to stay steady with your breath as you hold for three, two, Exhale, softly lower it down. Bend your knees as you reach forward, slowly rolling out onto your back. Cross your right ankle over your left knee. And draw that shin in towards your chest as you draw your left knee up. And keep your right toes active to help protect your knee. Your hands can come behind your left thigh, wrap around to your left shin. As you gently draw the left knee in, working the whole right shin towards your chest. But try to keep your sacrum flat on the floor. If this begins to feel really sharp pain in your right knee. Definitely back out a little and make sure your right foot is active. And then release the leg and switch it out. Left ankle on the right knee. And this side's probably very different. So the hand can come behind the right thigh or the right shin. 
maybe tighter or looser than the other. You're gonna keep some activity in the left toes. So with the exhale, you gently draw deeper, stretching out that left hip. The sacrum flat on the floor, even drawing your shoulders back and down towards the mat. With the exhale, you can release. Take hands out to the outside edges of the feet. Press soles of the feet to the floor as you draw your knees down the sides of your ribs. I mean the happy baby. You might gently rock from side to side, play with straightening the legs. Or just work right in the center as you draw the knees down and press the feet up. And draw the knees back into the center. Wrap your arms around your shins. Take a big inhale, and as you exhale, stretch the legs out. Let the hands fall by your hips, melting into Shavasana, the final resting posture, or corpse pose. Let it be a shape of repose, both physically and also mentally and emotionally. Give yourself permission to completely surrender into the stillness of the moment. Softening your body into the mat. Releasing the work. As the mind begins to wander, just gently compassionately guide it right back into the breath. As thoughts begin to float into the mind, just acknowledge them. See that yes, they're there. But that you do not need to attach to them. You do not need to go along for the ride. You can just let the thoughts float on through. Become aware that you are something actually beyond those thoughts. They are not you. You have the choice to attach to them or not. It's a choice that must be made over and over and over again. So give yourself permission right now as these thoughts and ideas float through to just acknowledge them but let them go. softening into the space between those thoughts. Allowing yourself to have stillness. Start coming back into your breath, following the inhale through your nostrils, all the way down into the bottoms of your lungs, lifting your navel, expanding your ribs. With the exhale, feel your belly fall away, 
and your ribs soften. Take your next inhale all the way out to your extremities, wiggling your fingers and your toes. And then begin moving your ankles and your wrists. Allow your eyes to remain closed as you bend your knees. And make your way over to your right side into a fetal position. Pause there for a breath or two. And then make your way back up to a seat. Coming back to the posture and the breath from the very beginning of the practice. Notice the sensations in your body. Feel the prana, the energy just flowing, coursing throughout. Maybe you have a new lightness in the posture, in your body, an ease in your breath, some softness in your mind. Slide the hands right up into your heart, bowing your head. Om Bolo Sat Gurudev Bhagavan Ki. Bowing humbly and deeply, honoring the greatest teacher that already exists inside of the heart. Namaste.